In this video, we're going to cover validation logic. Validation logic is used for complex validations that cannot be specified using the regular questions validation properties. To demo validation logic, I'm going to use the rules demo survey and the PC preview emulator. I'm going to start this survey at question number six. The question asks me how many people are in the car. This amount could be either one to eight. If I specify nine, I get the validation message that the value must be between one and eight. Note that this is not referred to as validation logic. This is a simple range for a numeric question, which does not require you to put in any validation logic on your own. Let's specify that the number of people in the car is seven. Next, we have to answer how many of them are males. Again, the range is one to eight. But if we answer eight, we get the following error message. Not possible. Males cannot exceed the total people in the car. This is done through validation logic. Let's say there are six males in the car out of the seven people. Next, we're getting asked how many females are in the car. Again, the range is one to eight. But if we answer that there are three females in the car, we get a logic validation message saying not possible. Number of females and males together should not exceed the number of people in the car. Since we specified six males, we're going to specify one female since this is all that is left. Next, we're asked the number of couples in the car. Now, remember, there's only one female and six males. So if I answer two, I get the error message that it's not possible. Number of females and males doesn't add up as in order for a couple, you need one female and one male. So in this case, the only valid number of couples in the car can be up to one. Validation logic can be either done based on logic that you write or based on custom functions that you write. Here is how to implement validation logic based on custom logic. The first question in the survey asks us how many people are in the car. It's a numeric question and the lower limit is 1 and the upper limit is 8. The next question, which asks us how many of them are males, has again a lower limit of 0 and an upper limit of 8, as there can be either 8 males or zero males if all of them are females. As you remember, there is a validation logic here that makes sure that the number of males does not exceed the number of people in the car. To put in that logic, we go to the rules tab and to the validation rules part. Each validation rule that we add is getting checked by the engine and if the return value of the expression is false, sorry, is true, the message will be shown. So in our case, we check that the answer of the current question, if it's bigger than the answer of the previous question, that means the answer of the current question is the number of males, if it's bigger than the number of people in the car, we put out the message, not possible, males cannot exceed the total people in the car. If we need to add another validation message or rule, we can by clicking the Add button right here and specifying the condition and the message. We can also change the priority in which the survey engine checks the validation rules by clicking the Up and Down button. To delete a rule, we can just click on the Delete button. 
The next question about the females ask us how many of them are females. Again, the range is 0 to 8 because all of them can be male as well. If we go to the validation rules for this question, we have two rules. The first validation rule was to make sure that the number of females, which is the answer of current question, if it's bigger than answer to question number six, which is the number of people in the car, we put out the message that it's not possible as females cannot exceed the total number of people in the car. If you're not familiar, by the way, with the function answer or any of our other internal functions, you can head over to our support center site at support.dublo.net and put in handbook in the search box. This will pull up the survey to go built in functions handbook. If you click on this post, you have a direct download link to the reference manual. The reference manual contains the list of all of our available functions and you can search them and get more information about each of the of the internal functions. Get a description, the parameter description, and an example for each of the functions. So as you recall, the number of female has two validation rules. The first one checks that the number of females doesn't exceed the number of people in the car. The second validation rule takes it one step further and checks that the number of females, which is the answer of current question, plus the number of males, which is the answer of the previous questions, does not exceed the number of total people in the car. And if so, it puts out a different message saying not possible, number of females and males together doesn't add up. For even more, more complex validations, you can use custom written functions and use them inside validation rules. As you recall, the next question asked us how many couples are in the car. The range of the couples are either 1 to 4, Re and the reason that it's 4 is because the number of people in the car cannot exceed 8, which means maximum of 4 couples. To put in the validation of how many couples there are, we need to do some custom calculations to make sure that the number of female and males add up to the, num to the number of couples. As this is not a simple expression, we wrote a custom function for this calculation. To reach the survey function library, you click on the advanced script link that's available either in the rules tab or the scripts tab. This brings up the shared function library of the survey. We have a couple of functions here, but the one that interests us is this one. We wrote this max possible couples function to calculate what is the maximum number of couples that can come out of a certain number of females or males. The calculation is not too complex, and what we do is we do a math.min, which means we extract the minimum number out of the two genders, either males or females as there cannot be more couples than the minimum uh, number of either males or, or females. So the smaller gender that we calculate becomes the number of maximum couples and we return that number as the function output variable. Next, it's up to us to use the maximum, the max possible couples function in the validation rule. And we do that right here in the validation rule of the number of couples question. What we put in is if the answer of the current question, which is the number of actual couples, if it's bigger than the maximum possible couples number, and we pass to that function the number of females, sorry, the number of males and the number of females, which is the answer to question number eight. We also convert that number into an integer number, which is a whole number, just to make sure as the answer to a numeric question can be also decimal numbers. 
This validation in rule in turn makes sure that the number of couples does not exceed the possible amount or the possible number of couples taking into account all the information that we've put in to the various numeric questions. As you can see, validation rules are used not for simple range checking or things that can be done through the user interface, but rather for more complex validation scenarios. In this video, we covered validation logic.